Hey race fans, Sean Hartwig here with another product update for Hobby Wing North America. Today I've got the privilege of actually showing you the new Z-Run 120 amp version 3.1. This is your all-in-one speed controller uh, for your 1 tenth and 1 twelfth scale vehicles. Um, i got to tell you, I've had a chance to do some testing on this and I'm really impressed with all the functions and uh, the parameters that you can customize for your racing style. So when you look at the side of the box, obviously you get a brief description of some of the features so you got your throttle curve and punch rate adjustments dynamic boost timing and turbo timing adjustment brake curve and brake rate adjustment multiple protection I'll cover that in a minute dynamic running data log awesome this thing has a built-in data logger so you don't need an external piece attached to your vehicle no extra software either uh, 10 factory profiles for plug-and-play that is also really nice you got 10 different functions or types of vehicles that you can hook this up to USB link software and LCD program box supported and firmware updatable so when you open up your box obviously you get your speed controller mine's already installed in a car I'll show you that in a second what you get in your box is going to be your heat shrink with your double-sided tape your uh, interface cable to attach your program box you get your user's manual you also have an additional information card which tells you about some of the other functions and uh, updates they've done to it and uh, of course you get your stickers too so you can decorate your vehicle and proudly show off your hobby wing system now moving right along when you get into this I gotta say this thing is excellent. It's only 37 and a half millimeters long. It's 31 millimeters wide. It was super easy to install because it doesn't take up any space at all. It's really tiny but really powerful. Now when you get yours you're going to notice that the uh, wires are already attached to the speed controller for your motor and your batteries. The uh, capacitor is already wired in. That's done for you. It doesn't come with any wire ends for your motors. You will have to install those. Um, and your battery as well, uh, the, the ends are not on it. I installed a Dean's connector, which is what I like to run. You can put on anything you want based on your personal preference. Now, moving along, um, this is an all-in-one speed controller, okay? You've got 10 factory uh, sorry, presets or profiles included. You've got your modified racing for your modified class of touring car. You've got a zero timing or blinky mode for your touring car racing. There's a, um, a practice mode, which is just for horsing around, that's got reverse. There's a sport racing mode, which is for uh, touring cars with less turbo timing. You've got um, three different stock touring car racing modes, a 10.5, a 13.5, and a 17.5 setting. You've got the buggy or short course truck setting as well. A rock crawler or even a drift car setting. I mean, really, it's all in one. You've got all of those settings, plus a data log, plus protection. I mean, they pack so much into this little guy. It's super impressive. Now, you've got the new built-in electronic switch, um, which is nice. This promotes longer life and better reliability. It also saves space because you don't have that little on-off switch with a set button somewhere else mounted on your car. This is your on-off switch and your set button all in one. Now, it's an all-aluminum case now, top and bottom which promotes better heat dissipation and allows them to run a higher current through it like the 120 amps you've got an external programming port or the EPP which is this little guy right here this allows you to take your interface wire and plug your program box into it and make your adjustments and it also is a secondary fan port I've got an extra fan hooked up to my motor uh, just to try and keep the heat down even further and I gotta tell you this thing runs super cool uh, not to mention it is super cool. Now you've also got advanced dynamic tuning technology which gives you more customization for your racing style. Uh, depending on what you're putting it in, you can tune this thing to your liking. It's really nice. The multiple protection function is your overheat protection for both the speed controller and your motor. Again, you can set it to a specific uh, temperature to shut off to make sure that you don't overheat it. You've also got the precision throttle and brake control settings, which are more options for your drag brake, your brake strength. There's a new punch and brake rate control function. There's throttle curve and brake curve tunability too uh, by attaching your program box to it with the USB cable and attaching it to your PC and you can get into changing those curves. Very nice. 
you've got an integrated data logger on this guy now. There's no need for an external data log to put somewhere else on your car and take up space and then have extra software and more stuff to goof around with. You got it all in this unit. You've also got the um, new USB software link uh, graphic control, which gives, again, more parameters for tunability. Um, what I did forget to mention is the data log. That covers your... Uh, maximum temp for the ESCN motor and it gives you your maximum RPM data as well. Uh, this thing is compatible with the LCD program box as I mentioned and you can do software and firmware updates on it. Uh, you can work on this in uh, a 1 tenth and 1 twelfth on-road or off-road car and there's even a 1 eighth and 1 tenth rock crawler. Um, you've got uh, voltage inputs from 4.8 volts to 11.1 volts. I'm running 7.4, and let me tell you, I found on my touring car that's plenty of power. But you can run an 11.1 volt uh, LiPo battery on it. That's crazy. You've got the BEC, or Battery Eliminator Circuit 2, which is 6 volts at 3 amps. Plenty of power for running uh, high-voltage, high-torque servos. You won't need... Um, any extra uh, capacitors because it already comes with a set of capacitors to make sure that you get a constant current rate to run your electronics. Uh, the fan is rated at 5 volts um, at uh, 0.16 amp, maximum 8.4 volts though. If you're going to put 11.1 volts through this guy, I recommend getting a 12 volt fan and switching out that 5 volt fan. You really don't want to have that burn out on you, uh, which would really suck. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to program your throttle and endpoint curves. So, you press and hold the button until it starts to beep. We're ready to go. You're now in program mode, so your first setting is uh, neutral. Don't touch your trigger. Press the button. One beep. Then you've got full throttle. Two beeps, two blinks, and then full brake. Three and three. Um, Alright, <clears throat> that's ready to go. Next I'll show you the uh, program box features. Now keep in mind I've already done testing on this and I've got some things changed on it. So I'm just going to go through the, the uh, uh, menu really quick with you. So, moving right along. You're going to press your item button to connect to the ESC. Alright, it tells you the software version, and you're in mode 1, which is the modified mode. If you want to change that mode, you press your RP button, uh, and then you use your value button to go through and change it. So you got mode 2 for zero timing, you've got practice mode, you've got sport mode, you have stock 10.5, 13.5, 17.5, you've got your buggy or short course truck mode, uh, crawler mode, and you've got the drift mode. Um, so all you have to do is press the RP button again to get into the ESC uh, data log, which gives you your temperature control, your motor temperature, and uh, the minimum voltage and maximum RPM. So again, pretty neat. So I'm going to put this back to modified mode, and we're going to get out of that. I'm going to press the item button again to get into your first parameters. So you've got running mode, which is forward and brake, if you want to change that, um, press your value button and then press OK in order to save it. Next is reverse speed, not admissible because I don't use reverse. Uh, you've got voltage cutoff. Um, it was set for auto. I've gone through and changed it to 3.4 volts and I hit the OK button to save. ESC overheat protection is 105 degrees. Okay, that's um, you can change that to 85 degrees, uh, 105 or 125, or disabled. Now, I'm not going to do disabled because that would just be suicide. And you've got motor overheat protection. Again, factory settings 105. There's three settings that you can choose. Uh, you've got your punch rate switch point at 50%. Your first punch rate's 15. I've got my second one set for 20. You've got your throttle curve at linear. I'm not going to change that right now because I don't feel it's necessary. Uh, you can hook it up to your PC to modify that if you want to do a, a non-linear curve. Neutral range is factory at 6%, leaving that alone. Drag brake I've set at 10%. You've got brake strength. Uh, it was factory at 75. I've changed it to 100. Initial brake is the drag brake. You've got your brake rate switch point. 60% uh, boost rate switch point, excuse me, 60%. 
First brake rate is 20. I left the second one at 20. Your brake curve is also linear. Uh, you've got boost timing. I set it at 15 degrees. You can go up to 64. That's crazy. My uh, boost timing start RPM is 10,000 RPM. Again, you can change that. The uh, boost timing end I've set for 24,000 RPM. You've got your uh, boost timing slope is linear. Um, boost timing by throttle, yes. Uh, you've also got your turbo timing. Again, 15 degrees is what I've set it at. You can go up as high as 64. You've got your turbo timing activation. Mine is set for RPM. You can set it for either throttle or throttle and RPM. Full throttle delay is 0.3 of a second. Factory. You've got your turbo timing start RPM. I've set mine for 20,000. Um, and then the turbo timing engage is 15 degrees at 0.1 second. The disengage is 24 degrees at 0.1 second. That's everything in the menu. I mean, really, for trackside uh, tunability, this thing is awesome. Um, when you want to disconnect this, by all means, turn the power off first. Uh, do not just unplug it and go, because then this thing will freeze up on you and you won't be able to do anything with it. Last note that I want to make, which I thought was pretty cool. If you're running this really hard and it gets really hot, you can actually turn this off by holding full brake for six seconds. And it will turn off for you. Uh, which is kind of nice in case it gets really hot and you don't want to burn your finger. Now, keep in mind when you do use that, it will clear your data log uh, information. Um, so really, only use that if you have to. Um, again, what a great system. Thank you so much, Hobbywing, for letting me review this product. Uh, I've been having a blast testing it. Guys, you've got to get one on order now. You're not going to be disappointed. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. Sean Hartwig from Hobbywing North America signing off. And remember, racers, race smarter, not harder. Enjoy your race day. We'll see you at the finish line.